thanks for watching. We're looking at uh, Euler and Phi in the Sphinx, okay? So, the Golden Sphinx. There's a golden ratio between the front and the rear paws of the Sphinx. The front of the front paws and the front of the rear paws, okay? So, it's a golden ratio. So, let's look at the right side first here. So, 0.618 is Phi, often represented by small, the Greek symbol Phi. Okay, so you got A over B. So, if you take 53.48, the royal cubits up to the front of the back paw and 86.52 to the front of the front paw, you get 0.618. So it's in the phi proportion. Okay, what about B over C? So you got uh, the distance between the front of the back paw compared with the whole length of the sphinx and uh, that's equal 0.618. So again we have phi. Now now we go to 1.618 C over B which is often represented with the, the capital phi, the you know, big phi and little phi. So 0.618 and 1.618 are phi. So C over B, okay? So if we take the full length of the Sphinx and divide it by that, uh, that front half of the paw-to-paw -paw measure, again, you get phi. So how about this one, B over A? So we take B, 86.52, over A, over the uh, back half of the Sphinx, and that's 1.618. Okay, so what about the left side? Well, you get the same thing, except notice the, the uh, when th it's a different, slightly different measure than the, than the right side, because the right paw sticks out farther to the east than the left. So if you look over there, you see the right paw sticking out farther. So you got a different ratio, but it ends up being the golden ratio on the left side. Okay, so the Sphinx is a golden guy. And, you know, we take the idea of right brain, left brain, you know, he's pretty balanced because both the right and the left side are according to phi. All right, let's look at Euler now. Euler is the constant uh, 2.718. It's in the Sphinx. So here's the uh, Sphinx with the, he's got the fissure in the back. There was initially a fissure that big. I had the artist draw this so it's to scale. That's how big the fissure was. It's been, you know, repaired by the Egyptian government. But there was this fissure in the Sphinx. Okay, so the Sphinx is 19 meters wide, all right, and it's 73 meters long, all right. So multiply the Sphinx width, which is 19 meters, times E. That's 2.718, and you get 51.64, uh, almost the slope angle of a great pyramid. Then multiply that by root 2, which is used often in Giza, and you get 73 meters. So there you go. The Sphinx width times 2 times Euler is the Sphinx length, okay. So Euler is built in to the Sphinx, okay. Now, let's look at that fissure in the Sphinx, okay? So, as I mentioned, it's been repaired, but that's that's how wide the gap was at one time. Uh, I, I Again, I studied it, and that's how big it was, okay? So, a fissure is an imperfection, right? Now, we just seen how the Sphinx is golden, but that's not a golden thing. Even though ancient Egyptians actually worshipped that fissure, you know, because it was created by God or caused by God, so it was like some kind of holy thing. But uh, it's a wound in the animal, Okay. So, the Euler constant, again, is uh, E, 2.718. So, if you take the, the rump, the back part of the fissure, and B is the front part of the fissure, and so you take the measurement of B, and you take the measurement of A, and you do the division, bingo! Euler is related to, and it, and it is at that point, I mean, because there's various ratios depending on where you draw those horizontal lines, and I drew them at, a, at, at the point where that ratio is actually 2.718. So it's over the right paw, as you can see there. So somehow the, the Euler measure is going along with this imperfection, the fissure, this wound to the lion, wound to the sphinx. And uh, that goes along with Euler. You know, phi is a constant, it's beauty, it's growth. You know, pi is a constant, it's like eternity, a circle, you know, sort of expansive concepts. But Euler, it's got a lot of practical usage, usages in industry, and, and one of its usages is for compound interest, which we'll look at in a minute. So Euler expresses limits, okay? Euler speaks of limits. Okay, so you want to invest $100 at 5%, okay? So you look at the local banks, and, you know, one compounds annually, one compounds semi-annually, one compounds quarterly, one monthly, and one weekly. So you're looking this over, and then all of a sudden you come to the bank that's actually closest to you, local bank, and they compound daily. Oh, man, you, you're getting in your car right now. You're taking that $100. It's a, just a couple miles from your house, and you're getting ready to put it in there. It's going to be compounded daily. When you get in your car, an ad comes on the radio, hey, distant bank, 15 miles away, they compound every second, 86,000 times a day. Oh, my goodness. 
You change your GPS course, you start heading for Distant Bank. Oh, you can't believe it. You know, you call your brother on the phone, and, and while it's ringing, Distant Bank runs another ad. Oh, we've got a special. We compound a thousand times every second. That's over 86 million times a day. Oh, my, she, she can't, you can't believe it. And so your brother comes on the phone and he's the accountant. You know, he goes, well, let, let me calculate, you know. So as you're driving, you're, you just want to hear how much you're going to have after you. So your brother starts giving you the numbers. How much will you have if you compound annually? Well, you have 105 bucks at the end of the year. Semi-annually, you'll have $105.06. Okay, you compound, compound quarterly, $105.09. You're going, yeah, yeah, come on, come on. You, give, give me the real figures. And your accountant brother says, okay, compound monthly, it's $105.12 you'll have at the end of the year. Okay, weekly, <clears throat> 105.12. Okay, well, uh, what it would be if I would have gone to my local bank? It's 105.13. Oh, well, you now, now you're, you, you've driven six miles. You can't wait for distant bank. Like, how much are you going to make? It compounds every second, 86,000 times a day. Uh, and you have 105.13. What about 1,000 times every second? At the end of a year, you'd have 105.13. So Euler expresses limits. <laughs> there are limits in the universe, and that compound interest is governed by Euler, and you never make more than 2.718. There's the formula if you want to check it out. So, the Sphinx is beautiful. It's got the phi proportion, but it also is not Horamakti, the unlimited god of the universe. There are limits on the Sphinx and on compound interest, and with Euler. <laughs> Thanks for watching.